You can now get two free audiobook downloads and a 30-day free trial at audible.pagosity.tv. Your choice from the world's largest selection of over 180,000 digital audiobooks and spoken word content for your iOS or Android device, Kindle, or MP3 player. Go to audible.pagosity.tv now. Welcome to the Bogosity Podcast for the week of June 4th, 2017. The podcast that finds answers, but no questions. This is your host, Shane Killian, and returning this week is Charles Thomas. Welcome back, Charlie. Hello, everybody. Before we get started, if you remember a while back, we did a special on the podcast and a sticky thread in the forum called Great Libertarian Novels That Aren't Atlas Shrugged. Oh, yeah. Yeah, one of those was The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Hulu has done an original TV series based on the book, and I'm really enjoying it. And if you don't want to read the book, you at least watch this series. It's really good. Margaret Atwood herself is a consulting producer. And they fleshed this world out a lot more than, than Atwood did in her original book. Like the book was just from Offred's point of view, but now they've broken out and shown things that she couldn't have known about and fleshing out the backstory and things like that. And it's really good. So if you have Hulu, check it out. Yeah, something I need to check up on. One more thing and we'll get going. If you look at the bottom of the show notes amidst all the links, the third one down just under the forum link is a link to our new Discord channel. So if you're on Discord, feel free to come in and discuss whatever you like with me and the other co-hosts. I'll be there. So that's a plus. <laughs> yeah, several of them have already come over and we've got some fans in as well. So I'm still learning my way around, so I might not be participating that much at first at least. But. You'll slowly love this thing. Hopefully when it does have video chat, I will run away from uh, Skype because, you know, Skype works 75% of the time and then next you know it just craps on you. Yeah, they they have the voice chat, but I haven't tried it out yet. All right, let's get to the stories. <laughs> yes, let's hemagglutinate the news of the bogus. And apparently the Belgian royal family is all butthurt over, of all things, a Burger King ad that was clearly tongue-in-cheek. Oh, really? The ad is to promote the opening of the first Burger King in Belgium on June 19th, and it's on whoistheking.be, B E, and it has you choose between the Burger King character and a cartoon version of Belgium's King Philippe, and it says, quote, Two kings, one crown, who will rule? Vote now. If you choose Philippe, the response is, are you sure? He won't be the one to cook your fries. <laughs> that's a little, that's cute. If you still choose Philippe, you're asked again if you're sure, and the yes button is really teeny tiny, and if you try to click on it, it keeps jumping around the page. So the only thing you can do is click no, so all roads leading you to choosing Burger King. Well, the royal family was not amused, saying that any use of the king's likeness must be approved by the royal family, so apparently freedom of speech is not a thing there. It's not really that her for distasteful. It seems to be just really a small little funny joke. But yet, I think the reason why they do this, the reason why these uh, leaders do this, because they want to have this whole authority. They are beyond reproach. Yeah. Royal spokesman Pierre-Emmanuel de Baal said, quote, we disapprove of this approach. Since it is for commercial purposes, we would not have given our authorization. Boo-hoo, someone's poking fun at your precious, wesh's kingy-wingy. Well, no real offense here. Nothing really uh, disturbing, you know. Even though yeah, it's, was... it's not like they're implying it's an endorsement or anything. They're just having a bit of fun. You turned a molehill into a mountain because of this. Yeah. Because I guarantee there's probably a lot more pressing issues over in Belgium and now now Belgian King has this issue to deal with and probably he's like uh why do I have to deal with this stuff yeah sadly they decided to pull the ad campaign it would have been great to see them stand up for the right to make fun of politicians but yeah but in the end you know Bergen people did not want to challenge the uh, might of the Belgian King or something he might you know take away like the waffles or something like that so. <laughs> you, Burger King can't sell waffles anymore yeah yeah, the the sad thing, I looked at a bunch of different stories on this and read through the comments, and all the Belgians I saw, at least all the ones who said they were Belgian, 
almost to a man they were against Burger King, and how dare they do this to their beloved leader? Yeah. Yeah, and they kept going on about how their monarchy is so much better than that scum Donald Trump. Well, you know what? At least we can make fun of Donald Trump. I mean, we can have a comedian hold up a fake bloody severed head of Trump for viral picture, and their royalty can't even stand a harmless parody like this. You know, they say that kings are beyond men, which is not true. They are men. Hopefully one day they will. They realize that, you know, maybe we shouldn't have this outdated form of government. I'm kind of wondering when we'll, re- <laughs> we'll realize we shouldn't have this outdated form of government. Yeah. Government's outdated. Sorry, that's just... Uh, it's obsolete. Well, one day at a time. Well, you know. Say, if you're tired of the promos in this podcast, well, the patrons got it early and with no ads or promos. Just go to patreon.bogosity.tv and donate at any level. Do you have children or nieces or nephews? Are you homeschooling or just want to counter some of the socialist indoctrination most children get in school? If so, go to bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins and you'll be taken to a website where you can get some great books for elementary age children. The Tuttle Twins books are books about liberty and free market economics that include children's versions of Bastiat's The Law, Leonard Reed's I Pencil, and Hayek's The Road to Serfdom, as well as books about the Federal Reserve and how regulations protect business cronies. They'll learn about the harm caused by eminent domain or regulations passed in the name of safety and fundamental concepts of liberty. And as you can see from the sample pages on the website, they're all easy to read and nicely illustrated. They're just $9.99 a piece, or get a special discount as well as free bonuses when you purchase all five. You can even buy in bulk to donate to schools and local libraries. So get the Tuttle Twins books at bogosity.tv slash Tuttle Twins. Just when you thought the SJWs couldn't get any more ridiculous, they bullied a Portland burrito shop into closing down because of, survey says, cultural appropriation. Seriously? These people just said, so, oh, we're, 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 we're nice, but next year we will shut down your business if it doesn't conform to what we want. Now, they're women, so you'd think the SJWs would be on their side, but no, because they're white. Collie mm. Wilgus and Liz L.C. Connolly opened Kook's Burritos after visiting Puerto Nuevo, Mexico. The experience inspired them to open a taco stand in their hometown of Portland, starting out as a taco truck, which was a smash hit that ended up being profiled by a local newspaper, and that's when their troubles began. Colony had told the paper, quote, I picked the brains of every tortilla lady there in the worst broken Spanish ever, and they showed me a little of what they did. In Puerto Nuevo, you can eat $5 lobster on the beach, which they give you with this bucket of tortillas. They are handmade flour tortillas that are stretchy and a little buttery, and best of all, unlimited. They wouldn't tell us too much about technique, but we were peeking into the windows of every kitchen, totally fascinated by how easy they made it look. We learned quickly, it isn't quite that easy. So a food blog in the Portland Mercury then accused the duo of preying on the women they met. It snowballed from there. Here are some of the comments from Alicia Dominguez, quote, Aw, so you nice ladies stole hard-working and low-income Mexican tortilla recipes and are now turning a profit. That's not quite basic privilege at all. What are they claiming? This is intellectual property or something? Uh, yeah, if they knew the history of the burrito, it wasn't all Mexico. In fact, it was a, a combination of uh, America and uh, Mexico as well. Well, it, was, it goes back to the Mayans, and I think there may have been some Asian influences, because when the Spanish came in, they brought things like Filipino culture and stuff like that in with them, and I think it's kind of a combination of those. Even worse, it's just, you know, they're trying to segregate cultures. It's this whole segregating uh, culture, saying only Mexican people can do this, or white people can only do this, or black people can only do this. It's segregating them to basically say you can't share any type of information, any knowledge, anything. And that, to me, is wrong. And to then close down a business just like that, it's very disturbing. So check this one out from T. McNeil, who, going by her avatar is black, quote, Stealing is in their nature, so I'm not surprised. 
They're not creative, so they had to get the idea from someone. Okay, swap the races, have a white person say this about black people, and tell me that wouldn't be the most racist Facebook post ever. Yeah, it is. So this original blog post read, quote, So let's recap the story thus far. These two white women went to Mexico, ate tacos, and then decided they would just take what the locals clearly didn't want to give them. What? They said they were talking to them and showing them what they did. If this is just another case, Shane, of people seeing what they want to see. Quote, If that wasn't bad enough, they decided to pack up all their stolen intellectual property and repackage it. Ha! Huh, what did I say? I was joking about them calling it IP and then they call it that. Wow. So they managed to get their business shut down and then said, quote, these appropriating businesses are erasing and exploiting their already marginalized identities for the purpose of profit and praise. Wow. And check out this comment from Shauna McKinnon, quote, Now that you all boldly and pretty fucking apologetically stole the basis of these women's livelihoods, you can make their exact same product so other white people don't have to be inconvenienced of dealing with a pesky brown middle woman getting in their way. Great job. Okay, how does them opening up a shop in Portland affect jobs down in Mexico? It makes no sense. It never does. And like you pointed out, it's not like tortilla making is any big secret. It goes back thousands of years, which is long enough to be public domain, even by U.S. copyright standards, or even European copyright standards. Yes, it's public domain. If I actually did the same thing, and I already talked about this, does that mean um, we can't do it? Like, oh, well. Well, you're a POC, so you get to do it. Yeah. It's just white guys like me. It's just this revenge politics, you know, and they want to have justice for people who are getting screwed. And I get that. Like, there's a lot of people who have been screwed by the system. But the way forward is not revenge. The way forward is trying to build bridges, not destroying them. Cook's Burritos has deleted its website, Instagram account, Facebook page, and Twitter profile. So once again, the bullies won. Yay. I, I don't think anyone can deny it anymore. You've pretty much said it yourself, Charlie. The social justice movement is a separatist movement. Take it to its logical conclusion, and you have white people doing their own thing and not taking anything from anyone else, and they're far more fanatical about it than any white supremacist ever was. If you're on the Wi-Fi in a coffee shop or hotel, anyone on that network can get your traffic. Do you really trust all of those strangers? For that matter, do you really trust your ISP? A VPN can protect you from prying eyes, disguise your location, and even foil government censors. It's essential in this day and age. So go to vpn.pagosity.tv and you'll be taken to BoxPN. Starting at just $2.99 a month, you can get unlimited high-speed connections to VPN servers all over the world. And they don't log connections, so your privacy is assured. Traveling abroad, just VPN home, and don't worry about what those other governments are doing. Back at home, stop your ISP from traffic shaping and messing with the quality internet access you're paying good money for. You can connect from multiple machines at once, including your smartphone or tablet, and it supports all the secure standards, including OpenVPN and SSTP. Bypass sensors and surveillance with your own secure VPN connection. Go to vpn.pagosity.tv. All right, well, after that story, how about some good news that might lift our spirits a little bit? Ohio Supreme Court Justice William O'Neill, who's considering running for governor, has said it's time for Ohio to decriminalize marijuana and release all nonviolent marijuana offenders from prison. Ah, finally, it's about time someone said that, and I wonder how long before Jeff Sessions comes in and says, you know, you can't do that. <laughs> But you know what? This country has been dragging its feet. 
I mean, you actually talked about this in your old, uh, old, old Bagasi episodes. Said that not only you know marijuana has been, um, you know, should be legalized, but all drugs should be legalized. Was it Portugal who actually decriminalized all the drugs, and since then all the violence went down? Yeah, violence went way down, and people have been able to more successfully manage addictions, things like that. I mean, it's been a good thing across the board. Yeah. Except that more people are getting high. Oh, how horrible. Oh, yeah. Some people are feeling good. What was that? Was it Ambrose Pierce or H.L. Mink and defined a Puritan as someone who lies awake at night afraid that someone somewhere might be happy. Yeah, and this will never be on a federal level because you know how much money the the government makes over the war on drugs? Oh, there's what we don't have it uh, covered for this week, but uh, Reason TV did a video a few days ago or last week or something like that where they were talking to the guy who was the scientist researching all of the effects of drugs for the UK, and he came to the conclusion that marijuana was far safer and far less addictive than alcohol, and they fired him for it. <laughs> of course. You know why? Because, again, it destroys their narrative. Why aren't cigarettes or alcohol illegal? Because we tried that alcohol thing being illegal once upon a time, and guess what? It didn't end up well, did it? It seems like history seems to keep repeating itself until we learned its lesson. Sadly, you know, we haven't learned that lesson as a society yet. So O'Neill said, quote, The time has come for new thinking. We regulate and tax alcohol and tobacco and imprison people for smoking grass. Treat addiction like the disease it is in the name of compassion. Now, that's not really new thinking. The Libertarian Party has had this as an official policy since its founding in 1971, but still nice to see new people coming on board. I would say this, the Libertarian Party has been like for what, gay marriage, for you know, legalization of drugs, and all these other things that people are slowly but surely getting you know, a handle on. So this, the, the war on drugs, especially within the black community and all the, and most communities, has basically destroyed so many lives. How many you know, fathers and mothers have gone to jail for just holding drugs? lost their chances to raise their kids, you know, 5, 10, 15 years. And then when they get out, they can't really find a job because it's easy to discriminate a, uh, a known felon. And then, well, I have no other choice but to go back to criminal mischief. It keeps this whole terrible money-making machine grinding. It keeps it this horrible machine going. And he wants to use these ideas to knock off the Republicans who control all the branches of government. Yeah, he is the he is the lone Democrat holding a statewide office there, so he's really wanting to try and use this to release the Republican stranglehold on the state. Yeah, and hopefully he has an idea other than though Trump is evil, yeah. then hopefully that he will that will convince the Ohioans that, yeah, this is something we need to look into and maybe we can actually uh, fight with. Yeah, and let's hope that it's more than just electioneering against the Republicans to be ignored as soon as he takes office. We've seen Democrats do that before, but time will tell. Yeah, and here's hoping that it will be a push to get everyone else out from prison into at least uh, more of medical rehab and such. Because, hey, work to Portugal, it can work for us. We live in a world where light bulbs connect to the internet, and recent attacks on them prove that your online security is under threat like never before. Not only your websites, but the internet-enabled devices you buy. And the biggest problem is weak passwords. That's why you need LastPass. LastPass allows you to randomly generate strong, unique passwords on the web and on your internet-enabled devices, all protected by one master password. LastPass sets up in minutes and gives you secure automatic logins throughout the web, synchronizing across all your browsers, all your computers, and even your mobile devices, at home, at work, or on the road. It even securely stores sensitive form data, including credit card numbers, backup sensitive documents, software licenses, Wi-Fi logins, and more. And with LastPass Premium, you can get these benefits on other applications, manage passwords for your entire family, and also get priority customer support. Sign up at password.bogosity.tv for a free month of LastPass Premium. Log in securely everywhere using the last password you'll ever have to remember. 
Go to password.bogosity.tv and get LastPass now. And now it's time to depersonate this week's biggest bogon emitter. And this week it goes to a lot of proponents of net neutrality for bogusly calling anti-net neutrality arguments posted to the FCC's website as fake comments and demanding that they be removed. Well, once again, the fake news concept. It's like my uh, other opinion is now fake news. And it's not. By the way, the net neutrality issue has been back and forth for people who are always for it. They say, well, we get to protect the open free internet. I'm like, you do realize that it's going down from a free market to the government and <laughs> and make it into utilities. Have you seen the utilities <laughs> and how the government manages them? Yeah, do you really want the internet to work like your power company? Yeah, talk to people of Flint, Michigan, about how government treated their utilities. <laughs> now, there are some allegations of outright personation. Fourteen people have come forward claiming they're pro-net neutrality but had anti-net neutrality comments posted in their name. Now, they're just allegations at this point. And we don't know if any have gone the other way either, but it's not at all unusual when you have something like this. And it's generally done quite a bit by people on each side of the issue just trying to cheat and game the system. I'm actually a bit surprised that they couldn't come up with more than 14, given the thousands of thousands of messages sent to the FCC. And it also wouldn't be the first time someone filed a comment for a site they disagreed with solely so they could later claim that people are filing fraudulent comments. But that's not the real issue. Net neutrality groups say that thousands of people have been impersonated using spam comments and their only piece of evidence is that a lot of them use the same text, which is, quote, The unprecedented regulatory power the Obama administration imposed on the Internet is smothering innovation, damaging the American economy, and obstructing job creation. The plan currently under consideration at the FCC to repeal Obama's Title II power grab is a positive step forward and will help to promote a truly free and open internet for everyone. Now, that text comes from a group called the Center for Individual Freedom, or CFIF, who wrote, quote, The Center for Individual Freedom is mobilizing concerned Americans across the country who are opposed to the Obama-era Title II regulations that gave the federal government sweeping regulatory power over the Internet. Through national digital and activist advertisement, CFIF is helping to connect Americans with the Federal Communications Commission to call upon the commissioners to fix the ill-conceived regulations passed on a party-line vote in 2015 under the previous chairman. The message concerned Americans are sending to the FCC points out the harms of the Title II approach, and supports Chairman Pai's current plan to repeal the Obama administration's power grab. Now, if you remember when we covered this issue a few weeks ago, I mentioned websites that sprang up in the wake of John Oliver's coverage, where you could go in and fill out your info and hit a button and it would send pre-written comments. Some of them left a space for you to add your own comments. At least one, the EFFs, had it so you could remove their comments and say whatever you wanted, even if it was to make it an anti-net neutrality comment if you want. But the point is, there's a lot of that repeated text in pro-net neutrality comments for that reason. So basically what they're saying is, our copy pasta is good, copy pasta from the other side is fake spam comments that must be removed and disregarded. But you might recall, this is why I urged people to write their own from scratch, and when I wrote mine, I even avoided some of my common talking points just so they couldn't do that. But... That doesn't make these comments copied from CFIF any less valid, and yet, here's what the pro-net neutrality groups want the FCC to do. Quote, Notify all who have been impacted by this attack. And how do you know who it is? The copy pasta, of course, but only on the anti-side. Of course. And the next thing you know, oh, well, you know, that means everyone's pro-net neutrality. Everybody. Yep. Amazing, isn't it? <gasps> Remove all of the fraudulent comments, including the ones made in our names from the public docket immediately. Okay, remove the ones where people come forward and say they didn't make the comments. But they're not saying only to remove those, but other fraudulent ones. In other words, the ones with the C5 copypasta. But not the copypasta from the pro side. 
publicly disclose any information the FCC may have about the group or person behind the 450,000 plus fake comments so like they don't really know who it is. It's a mysterious group and not CFIF who has their own website where anti-people can do exactly what the pro side has been encouraging their people to do as well. And hey, do you want that information disclosed about all of you too? I mean, fair is fair. And finally, call for an investigation by the appropriate authorities into possible violations of 18 U.S.C. Section 1001, making false statements and other relevant laws. But again, just the anti-side. It's always about self for these people. They never want to hear any opposing ideas or anything else about against net neutrality. Evil corporatists will use their power in government, your representatives, to basically ice people out. That's how they, you know, become these one or two cable providers. Same with Pepco and all the stuff around here in Maryland. That's what they did. They lobbied the government to make sure they the only ones to provide this service. Now, of course, if it turns out they're right and there is this fraud going on, it needs to be investigated. But again, the only evidence they have for this is that the comments are verbatim. Just like all those comments sent from the pro sites. And even this Ars Technica column acknowledges that, quote, The identity of people running the spam bots is unknown. Hey, you know what else is unknown? Whether or not these spam bots even exist. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, people. This is not a vote. The reason for the comments is so people can give arguments to the FCC, and it's the arguments they should be paying attention to, not how many people make them. So the pro-net neutrality people tried, and to a huge extent succeeded, to game the system. They're only butt hurt because the other side tried to do exactly the same thing. Which is why all of the groups whining about this are this week's biggest bogan emitter. If you're going to shop online, use our special links to shop at Amazon. Clear your cookies and go to Amazon.Pagosity.tv, and you won't pay a penny more for your purchase. If you haven't used the mobile app in the last 12 months, or even at all, go to Get5.Pagosity.tv on your phone or tablet and get $5 off your order of $10 or more. Go to Prime.Pagosity.tv for a free 30-day trial of Amazon Prime and enjoy thousands of movies and TV episodes, borrow Kindle books, and get unlimited two-day shipping for free. And speaking of Kindle, go to Kindle.Pagosity.tv for a 30-day free trial to Kindle Unlimited, read over one million books, and listen to thousands of audiobooks on any device. You can go to music.pagosity.tv and get a free 30-day trial of Amazon Music Unlimited with access to Amazon's entire library of 10 million songs, ad-free and with unlimited skips, and even download to listen offline. All great ways to help this podcast simply by shopping at Amazon. And now let's thaw the books of this week's and this is just completely unbelievable. Actually, no, it's not. It's completely believable, more's the pity. The Army has lost $1.3 billion worth of weapons and equipment. Just lost it. It was around here somewhere a minute ago. Let's look behind the sofa cushions. Yeah, it's probably under the bed. It's usually that's where it is, but... This is the same people who lost all that money when we were evading in Iraq. Yeah, and they ended up losing something like five trillion or something under Bush and Obama. Yeah. Yeah. So just on top of that, all of these were sent to Kuwait and Iraq and could easily have fallen into the hands of ISIS, as revealed by a 2016 audit made public by a request from Amnesty International under the Freedom of Information Act. Amnesty researcher Patrick Wilkins said, quote, this audit provides a worrying insight into the U.S. Army's flawed and potentially dangerous system for controlling millions of dollars worth of arms transfers to a hugely volatile region. This should be an urgent wake-up call for the U.S. and all countries supplying arms to Iraq to urgently shore up checks and controls. <laughs> uh, you think that's actually going to happen anytime soon? The list includes tens of thousands of assault rifles, hundreds of mortar rounds, and even armored Humvees. The Pentagon responded, quote, We have a very good system of accounting for equipment and tracking it all the way, but it's never going to be perfect, and there are localized inefficiencies. 
I love how $1.3 billion is localized inefficiencies. What does a major screw-up look like? <laughs> a major screw-up would be Iraq. Well, would it be Iraqi forces going around in U.S. Humvees shooting U.S. soldiers with U.S. assault rifles? Because it looks like that might be the result of this. You know, it's very interesting to see how much this country spends on its military. So much money and billion dollars wasted. We are so ahead of everyone else. It's like we're waiting for an alien invasion or something. I don't understand. I know we're the last superpower, but that doesn't mean to just continuously throw our weight around. So all of that makes the U.S. Army this week's... Idiot Extraordinary! Well, that wraps up this. Now you listen to me. This is very important. I have a vital meeting to attend, and I've just shot myself in the leg. Edition of the Bogosity Podcast. Come join the discussion at forum.bogosity.tv, and feel free to send a question, statement, news article, or rant in text or audio to podcast at bogosity.tv. This podcast depends on you to keep going, so please donate using the links on the website or the QR codes in the thumbnail, or become a patron at patreon.bogosity.tv and get the podcast and YouTube videos early and without ads or promos. Thank you for listening, and thanks to Charles Thomas for joining me. Uh, No problem. Until next time, here's a quote from Jonah Goldberg. An idiot is no smarter if a billion people agree with him, and a genius is no dumber if a billion people don't. The Bogosity Podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution on Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. Bogosity. Want answers to creationist claims against evolution? Would you like to know more about evolution yourself, or even engage creationists more directly, with actual peer-reviewed sources to back you up? My book, How Evolution is Scientific, is designed to show the basics of evolutionary theory and how it is so well supported using the scientific method. It's impeccably sourced, with references to the actual scientific material, and is arranged using the creationists' own criteria of what is scientific. Using their own arguments against them, see how evolution is scientific, but creationism is not. Based on observations, accurate predictions, logic, and evidence. Get answers to common creationist claims, and even a primer on abiogenesis, the start of all life. It's all in my book, How Evolution is Scientific, available at Amazon, and on Kindle, EPUB, and PDF as well. Get How Evolution is Scientific and never be taken in by creationists again.